Hello, everyone. Oh, look at you, Serge, talking right as the intro comes up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, oh, I, was like, I thought I had a second. I was watching the stream. I forgot about stream delay. What a, what a start! Forgot. What a bunch oh. of professionals we are. I'm so good at this. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode four of the Moonlighters. Uh, we're all so stoked to be back, and we're all so stoked that you're here. Um, it's uh, it's been a awesome, awesome, awesome session so far. I'm I'm really, really pumped to get on back to this. Uh, and I know a bunch of us have had long streaming days and we've all, we've all been, we're, we've been, we've been burning the candle at both ends, TQ especially. Uh, so uh, let's, let's, uh, let's not beat around the bush. Let me go around uh, and, uh, and, and, and let these wonderful, wonderful performers introduce themselves. Why don't we, let's, let's mix it up again. Let's start with uh, Serge. Do you want to start us off today? Hello, everybody. My name is Serge. Uh, other than when I'm over at Loading Ready Run, you can find my own channel at twitch.tv slash Serge Yeager, playing mostly Minecraft and some other like resource based games, mm -hmm. uh, often uh, moral ambiguity. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, 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 that's, a, yeah. that's a good way to put it, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Funko, do you want to do, do your little dealio? Hello, uh, I'm the Australian voice you hear, represented by a koala. Uh, my name's Funko, I'm a Twitch streamer, and uh, I think that's it. I'm just a Twitch streamer. Hello, hi. Yeah, you do all kinds of fun stuff, though, on your streams. I know you're a big, that's uh, true. You're a big PUBG lad. Yeah, do a lot of shoot-ems, uh, and do uh, doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Adam, why don't you hey. do your thing? Hi, hello, uh, my name is Adam. Uh, Twitch.tv slash cbad. So I'm there Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I'm a Dauntless partner. I've been playing a lot of that lately. Um, and I've been playing through Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Yeah, you're on yeah. two now. How's that going? Yeah. Uh, I am reserving judgment. The <laughs> yeah. first one was fucking not a good video game. <laughs> it's a dated like, video game. Playing it 2019, it's not a good video I was going to yeah. say, how much has D&D changed in 15 years? Yeah, yeah. Second yeah. edition D&D fucking sucks. Going back to that Thaco? Yeah. Ass. It's, uh, it's, it's rough. Ass, okay? <laughs> uh, and last but not least, TQ. Hi, friends. Yeah. I'm TQ. Uh, you're going to call me Sly, too. That's totally fine. Um, my channel is just like TQ, and I'm exhausted because I just did three days of Twitch Rivals competition for money and charity. Mm -hmm. How'd it go? <laughs> the squinty eyes. <laughs> How'd it go for you? Uh, it was really good. We won one round in Sea of Thieves, which was two days in a row. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, yeah, we did. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Fungo was with me on Sea of Thieves and randomly Overwatch, which was today. Uh, we did Rivals for Overwatch for charity. And then Funko randomly showed up as a, a ringer when someone couldn't make it. So we Look, I'm just a professional Twitch Rivals mercenary now. So he, doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't say this, but he's also streamed for three freaking Twitch Rivals for three days in a row. We're exhausted. Yeah, yeah. And what better time to be exhausted than uh, the beginning of a two-hour D&D stream? <laughs> That's like most of our default states. Oh yeah, yeah. just just yeah. consistently going through a lot all the time. <laughs> yeah, we're just, yeah, for just for going through a lot all yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah. If you slow um, down, you die. Yeah. Uh, and if, you, if you're if you coming over to this channel and you you don't know who I am, hi, I'm Benjineering. This is my channel. I do all kinds of uh, wacky stuff, including this D&D &D campaign every other Thursday with uh, my, my lovely friends here. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can, you can find all kinds of stuff here. Uh, like Adam, I'm actually also playing an old RPG right now. I'm playing through... Uh, the vampire, uh, vampire, the masquerade bloodlines, and it's a heck of a thing. I I know nothing about this universe, and holy moly, there's uh there's some stuff going on in there. Uh, and I also I just wanna I wanna give uh, a, a shout out. I see that Adam Cobell is uh, is hanging out in chat. Uh, if you want to see primo D and D content and just primo content in general. Uh, go give Adam a follow. He's uh, he's such a tremendous human, and he's actually going to be uh, coming into town. Uh, I think next Monday, isn't yeah. it? He's starting a, a brand new D and D campaign on the uh, on uh, on Dice Friends. So uh, Dungeon World, uh, the game he helped create. Yes, yeah. I'm I'm super pumped. I'm I'm super pumped to watch that. Um, 
And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of that, that that's our intro. I'm gonna do the little housekeeping thing before we start, and then uh, we'll we'll get underway because uh, I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna end at eight. See if we can we can be smart about that and, and do it that way. So um, this is uh, this is our D and D stream. We do it every uh, other uh, the Thursday, like I said. And uh, because these are all wonderful performers, I like to do my best and uh, ensure that their time you know, here is, is worth it and stuff. Um, so how that works is it's kind of like a, a street performers festival or anything like that. If you enjoyed this, sh if you're enjoying the show at any point, uh, feel free, uh, to, uh, shoot bits, uh, our way. Um, I, I, uh, divvy up those bits and I give them to, uh, the, the performers. So it's kind of like their tip and, and way that I can, uh, pay them for, for being here. Um, but, uh, if, uh, if you, if you can't give, if you can't give bits, it's totally fine. We just really, really appreciate you being here, but I like to, you know, give that little, uh, give that little, uh, shout out. Um, cause, uh, yeah, it's, it's, an, it's important to, to that our, the, the performers get paid so that we're not all destitute. Um, other than that, I think that's it. Is that House rules. House rules, yes, thank you. Serge always reminds me. Uh, I'm bad at D&D, &D, uh, and a lot of the times I'm going to fudge some rules. And uh, what that means is if, it, if this is the Cameron Lauder rule, uh, if we do something and I and I say it's done a certain way, that's how it was meant to be. It's house ruled to be that way. We, we busted. Uh, fifth, fifth edition needs work anyway, right? Right. <laughs> so uh, so that's that's that, that's basically the kind of thing. So if we make a if we, if we fudge a rule, we'll try and fix it in the future. But for this time, it's uh, it's house ruled to be that way. Uh, I think that's it. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's scoot on over to this lovely overlay and uh, let's talk about. What happened last time mm. on uh, on there on the uh, on the old episode? Because a, a lot of things happened. It was I was I was doing the recap of everything, and turns out uh, we do a lot of things. In uh, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do. Sorry, I just noticed that my camera. And I'm a hand talker, so it's important that you can see my hands. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about what happened last time on D and D. So last time on the Moonlighters. Uh, our adventurers crawled through the spooky tunnel and found themselves neck deep in goblin territory. Um, after murdering some goblins and taking one hostage, uh, they met Erky Timbers, a gnome who was captured, and told them more about the wizard Belek that lives below the citadel. Uh, afterwards, they managed to find the wormling Calcrix uh, with Meepo, uh, and after a stern talking to with Meepo, amongst <laughs> other things that uh, went down, uh, <laughs> they convinced him to lost a hand. Yeah, yeah. They they convinced him to return to the kobolds, uh, and tell the tribe where she was located. More or less, you know, kind of fulfilling their end of the bargain that they uh, that they had uh, with the with the leader of the kobolds. Uh, they afterwards uh, encountered the entire goblin tribe, like their whole main living little uh, community, um, who actually told them that the hobgoblins. Uh, about the hobgoblins that kind of took over their lives and, and their society and stuff. And after liberating them from the grasp of Dern and, and freeing the goblins, uh, they were told about um, the two adventurers that they had kind of come looking for. Uh, they were sent down uh, to uh, down this mine shaft that's kind of in the middle of this goblin throne room. Uh, and uh, after after some some partying and whatnot uh, with the goblins and getting a full rest. Uh, the party was what really ticked them over and experience. All of our adventurers have now hit level two. Exciting. Oh, yeah. yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We get to do a little bit more shitty stuff. Yes. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Slightly <laughs> better. Yeah. <laughs> um, the four of you find yourself standing in a doorway of the goblin throne room. Mm -hmm. And uh, the goblins have all, you know, thanked you, and they did their little Ewok dances during that <laughs> celebration, you know, the jub jub and all that jazz. Um, and uh, you've all had a chance to rest, and you're healed up, and your spell slots are renewed. Um, Grenel, the uh, the goblin shaman uh, that uh, you kind of rescued, um, she says, Thank you again, Moonlighters, for all your help. The tribe will remember this. You will always be friends of the Gaul tribe. Below. You'll find the tunnels leading you to the wizard's grove. Those who have ventured down have never returned. So please do be careful. Um, 
also take this. And 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 she kind of waddles over to you with her staff and and hands Oscar uh, this uh, ring, and it's a signet ring. And on the on the on the ring, you can see a it's like a little sword and a little staff, and kind of intertwined uh, between them is a rose. Okay. Um, and uh, she also goes and this. This was the contents of the chest uh, that D- that Dern stole from us, and uh, it's two hundred and thirty gold pieces. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they've decided oh, yeah. to give you. Okay. Um, nice. and uh, they they kind of wave and uh, and 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 continue to thank you all. Yeah. I'll before they I'll be like, remember, if you're ever in trouble, come look for the moonlighters. We might not be big now, but we're gonna be the big, the greatest guild in all the land. Oh my god, he never stops. <laughs> I think I, it's kind of cute. I mean, you certainly you certainly uh, uh, you know impress these goblins. You, you you've been doing good deeds. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Um, so we meet Funko learned that all goblins aren't pieces of shit. Well, let's not go. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's pump the brakes on that one. <laughs> Pacific goblins seem okay. That's, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, uh, for reference, in the in the throne room, in case uh, some of you uh, forgot, yeah, uh, there is this mine shaft kind of looking thing, uh, and it approximately descends about like. You you can't see to the bottom, but it is clearly you know even with you know Magnar's dark vision like past fifty feet like far farther farther than fifty feet it's just pitch black down there, mm-hmm. and to get down uh it's like a little kind of uh, elevator system that can probably hold maybe like two or three of you at a time, depending on I don't know who's who who went really hard at the 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 festival. What about right. what about two large males, a child, and a woman? Is that does that count as three? <laughs> well, there's four. <laughs> no, all right. I was wondering if well, maybe I mean, if puts Tully on his shoulders, then <laughs> that's one person. That's yeah. one person. That's yeah. true. That's but, just yeah, science. But Magnar is like a thick lad. Like you're you're, you're like right. you you you're a broad shouldered you know gentleman. Magnar is thick. Nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Well. Who wants to lead first? I volunteer. Uh, I okay. I I feel uncomfortable sending the child first. Okay. Well, I'm. Uh, I would like to be in that uh, in stage one. I think that's a good plan. Send okay. The thick, um, send the thick boy and just a boy. Ben, um, what was the name of the goblin that gave me this ring? Uh, the goblin's name is Grenel. Grenel. So hey, uh, Grenel. Um, yes. Does the is the ring just a ring? Or does it do something? Well, it's a ring that I assume you can put through on your finger. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's what I vote with the answer I expected. Nice. All uh, right. Do you want to do like an arcana check or anything like that? Uh, I can't. Neoma, do you, can you take a look at this? Is this magical at all or anything? I mean, I can do. Do you have arcana? Uh... I don't. Do you have a negative though? <laughs> You it's t- up to- oh, it's I, I, can, right? You're I, a can, I can look at it, but none of us can tell if it's when it comes to magic. Yeah, I don't really study it. Like I can look at it, but I just kind of explode oh. rather than okay learn. Word choice, but okay. So <laughs> yeah, so neither neither of us know anything. All right, well I'll put it, it looks in. Like a ring I'll put it. Ring. Yeah, it's a fucking ring. I put it in like my a pouch in my belt for now. Okay. Uh you also uh, have the two hundred and thirty gold pieces that uh you can you can I assume Am I holding on to it or she handed it I, to like, you? Def- okay. Uh yeah. I guess how do we do we want to just split this up now or do we want Oh to- so it's a ring and the gold pieces? I yeah. thought that was the worth of the ring. No, 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 no. no, no. Okay, okay. Okay. I've so been like I've been writing ring. down what we've been earning. Let's well, just I don't get the ring. Like I mean like we're just like I'm assuming um, that we're going to share everything for. Yeah, we'll split these afterwards. Should yeah. put a ring on Magnar. Should I put a ring on it so he doesn't get away from me? <laughs> um, if you like it, better put a ring on it. That's what yeah, I'm say. that's true. Also, but if you love something, let it go. <laughs> right. And okay. So yes, we should probably so split up the me, gold before go we get. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let you go down this mine shaft. You can hike your ass down that mine shaft, Magnar. 
All right, let's go. All right, uh, I, right. I've been writing down the gold we've been earning, so afterwards we'll just split it. So up. why don't we send fine. Magnar and Magnar and Neoma first, and I'll chill here with the yeah, child. I think that's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a name. I'm not just the child. I'll beg uh, your pardon. You, yeah. Oscar, yeah. you look after the child. Uh, okay. Animal. I'm going to be the world's greatest adventurer. How dare you? Yeah, you Sorry, will. Sorry, totally. All right. So Magnar and Neoma, you kind of walk over to the 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 mine shaft. Uh, and the child and the guy uh, <laughs> hang out uh, up top. And uh, so it, 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 it's not really rickety or anything like that. Like this, this gets used quite a bit, um, uh, sending things down into uh, the, the below. Uh, so you, you, you know, get, you get on it with ease. Um, and uh, Oscar and Tully, you can uh, help kind of lower it in. It's just sort of like a, like a, a turny wheel that yeah. you just sort of, you can lower them down. Um, sure. Do any of you have any like light or anything like that that you're gonna? Well, do? I can I can cast light on something. Yeah, could you light my yeah. warhammer up? I'll like, I'll, ca I'll, I'll cast light on uh, Magnar as a warhammer. Great. Okay. I'll hold it up like like Link. Sir, sure, sure. So yeah, just like Link. <laughs> so Magnar's got this glowy hammer, and you're all starting to get lowered down. Neo, Neoma, you don't have dark vision or anything, right? I do not know. No. Okay, so Magnar, you have a little bit of a better view. Um, and uh, as you're lowered down into the darkness, uh, you can make out very little of what's below. Um, but you can ascertain uh, that you've traveled. You're traveling down, like like I said, more than fifty feet, and it hits like sixty feet. Um, and and as you get to about like the sixty foot mark, um, Magnar. Uh, you're able to sort of make out a little bit of what's below, and Neo Neoma, you can see um, a little bit of the uh, of a glow. Um, and Magnar, you're kind of able to see uh, that there appear to be like fungus and whatnot uh, that line the wall of this room that you're getting lowered in, down into. And as you get lower and lower, uh, this violet light uh, starts to kind of light everything up, and you're able to see what's kind of going on and what's going on is uh you're in this wide sort of cavern and the air is like damp and chilly um with odors of like loam and decay um and there's a you 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 hit sort of the the bottom uh and there is a it's just like a layer of like earth like dirt um and like rotting vegetation um as well as like the remains of what seem to be like cave animals on the floor um, and also all kinds of varieties of uh, mushroom and fungi grow on the walls like these. Uh, and you notice that that is where the light is coming from, these bioluminescent uh, violet fungi that are sort of all over the place. Um, and on the far eastern wall, uh, Magna and Yoma, you see a small wooden door as well as a second door on the southern wall. Nothing, okay. nothing else of really interest in this room currently. All uh. right. Careful, Neoma. There's more stink trees down here. No, y'all right down there? there. There, we got stink trees down here. I think they're just mushrooms. Yeah, that's what I said. Mushrooms like the ones that attacked. Attack. Oh yeah. Attacked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm assuming we have to crank this thing back up. Yes. Okay. So I'll start doing that. Okay. So we're bringing right, the we'll... elevator back up. Up. Well, do we? Do we we're gonna wanna... just hold. We don't. I don't think we should explore. I think we just want to hold here okay. and just chill for the time being. Okay. So the okay. Ele the elevator makes its way up. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Oscar and Tully, you get in, and a couple of goblins sort of uh, waddle over, and they're like, "Yeah, we'll help you get down." Uh, and they they start turning the uh, the thing for you, so that the two of you can also descend. Stop Thanks, it! I'm goblins. falling in love with these goblins. <laughs> yeah. Um. And, we'll be uh, back once we defeat the evil wizard. Yeah. <laughs> and eventually you two are lowered down, and now the four of you find yourself in this uh, cavern. All right. Uh, all right. Are these you the same types of mushrooms that were sentient and attacked us last time, or are these just normal mushrooms? They look similar, but not the exact same as the ones that you saw upstairs. All right. Well, we got to start moving. Mm. Yeah. So... so yeah. So as I mentioned, there is a door on the far eastern wall, kind of yeah. baked into the the because this is still the the cat the citadel, right? Um, this is still the sunless citadel. It, but it's 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 kind of this this is deep within it, and it has sort of uh, become one with the earth a little bit. Okay. Uh, 
Um, so oh. there'll, there'll, be, there'll still be doors and corridors, but everything's sort of been overgrown with, with earth. Yeah. Well, let's head towards the door, I guess. It's the only yeah, way Is there any goes. visual, any uh, apparent difference between the doors? Uh, no, uh, I would say they're both, they're both just sort of your, your average, uh, wooden doors. Um, but if everyone can make a perception check for me. Yeah, I sure can. Oh, that's not good. I got an eight. 11. Okay. 16. Okay. 10. All right. So Neoma, as you approach this door, you are able to hear, um, a little bit of commotion. Uh, behind the door, um, what kind of sounds like squishing, um, as well as like various kind of clattering and stuff like that. Um, okay. And to the southern door, you don't hear anything really. This is this seems to all be kind of emanating from the eastern wall. Okay, so there's definitely something behind the one door because there's noise coming from it. I don't know what it is. It sounds just like movement. Nothing too particular in sound. Hmm. All right. So we can either go with door number one, which has something behind it, but maybe we need that, or door number two, which has like no sound, but maybe because there's a reason for that. Yeah. Um, I'm okay with sounds. Like, I, mean, yeah, I, I feel like no matter first. which way we go, we're going to be running into stuff. Right. You'd rather like go to the, the door first step to avoiding somebody, an ambush. Yeah. Is no, knowing ambush that there's someone there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's. Uh, I'm going to head over to the east door. Okay. Uh, and then I will uh, open it the appropriate direction that it, that door would be opened. <laughs> all right. I'll be. I'll be ready. With- I like how you're like permanently scarred from <laughs> this door. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, all right. So you you gingerly open the door, um, and you you pull it open. Uh, and what you see is uh, a similarly lit large room. Um, it seems that all of these uh, these uh, rooms down here appear to be all lit with these uh, these violent fungus that are around uh, the the walls and stuff. Um, and you you see a room that has two rows of dragon car like marble columns um, down the length of the hall. And most of them are just completely covered with this luminescent fungus. Um, and the cobbled floor that is sort of beneath your feet, um, it's like cracked and stained. Um, and on it are a bunch of small wooden tables. And the contents on the tables include things like mortar and pestles and like small tools and bowls filled with crushed leaves um, and other kind of plant specimens and whatnot. Um, and there are several doors. In fact, there are uh, three uh, sort of lining each side of the room. Um, and some of these doors are like partly open, other ones are closed. Um, and you continue to sort of hear this this squishing noise, Neoma, uh, coming from the uh, the far the, 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 the chamber just like to your right. So just point Southwest. of clarity, is this room ruined? And there's stuff left over on it, or it's like somebody's living in this, and this is fresh mortar and pestle and stuff. The, these appear to be in use, like the like like no within the day. Within the day, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the the mushrooms are kind of off to the side, but the workstation is clean, or it's the sort of thing where like the mushrooms are built into it, and it's a fungus alchemy combined thing. No, as well, I mean the fungus fungus is everywhere. Like, like okay. straight up, this whole place is gonna is covered in fungus, but like the the all the all the more like the mortar and pestle and all that kind of jazz these these all seem like they've been recently used like they're not like baked into the wall or anything like that okay mm. like i said you can hear the squishing uh you can also kind of barely hear um snores what sounds like a snoring uh from the room to your uh like right to your left as well so squishing on your right snores to your left here i am I'm stuck in the middle. In the middle with you. Yep. How loud are these snores that we hear them? Quite loud. Quite loud. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. That's. Hmm. Well, I think we should check out the squishing first. Really, the squishing? Yeah. Well, see, yeah. what I'm like sleep, a large creature. What I'm what I'm thinking is squishing. Don't know snoring. Humanoid. Yeah, but squishing means something's awake. Snoring means something's asleep. Okay. So sneak past hmm. the snoring thing? 
Yeah. Also, in the stories I've read, the only things that snores are giants and dragons, and I don't think we could take either of those. Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to point out that just you have a lot to learn about women. <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, so what would you like to do, friends? Oh, got me. Holy shit. Um, I think we should check out the squishing. My vote, I vote squish. All right. So Oscar walks over. Yeah, yeah I'm just going to go take a peek. Yeah. In, in the, in the, in the, in the interest of making y'all do something, uh, yeah. Oscar, you kind of, you, you, you walk on in and you, you go, you go and the door is like right to your right. Yeah. Um, uh, and you pop, you kind of like peek in and you can see two goblins. Uh, okay. In in like a very large wooden basin, yeah. and they're they're kind of doing like a little jig inside okay. of this basin as they're squishing what what kind of appears to be like uh, roots and fungi into into a pulp. Oh, wine. they're it's making cool. wine. Goblin wine. Yeah. I mean, I could go for a glass of wine. Should that might just be a good time. We don't Should know. Should we scare them? No, we're not gonna... <laughs> Remember, we're we're the heroes of the goblin people. Yeah. Yeah, they don't know that though. Well, yeah, Oscar, well, we're kind of them... traveled. Yeah, let them know the ho- the hobgoblins are defeated and they're free. Uh, I, I, also, I well, whatever we do, we probably want to be quiet because there's something snoring nearby. We could just leave them. All right, so Oscar, you walked over so people see you at this point, um, and the goblins kind of just like tilt their head a little bit seeing you yeah. in the in the like peeking your head in yeah a bit I'm and like, they go uh, that hey uh hey little guys um oh oh show them the ring <laughs> that might be like yo we know your peeps oh, yeah show yeah. them the ring that's okay cool. yeah i guess i'll be like hey uh i don't speak goblin but oh. I, just, I just say hey first like i'm just like hey uh little guys um okay i will i will rush forward when i hear goblin uh and explain like <clears throat> You know, hey, what's up? Uh, we uh, we know Grenell. Uh, we're good buds with Grenell. See the ring. This is from Grenell. Uh, <laughs> so how's it going? What's up, uh, what's up with you? So at first, the, the goblins kind of see you producing this ring, and they they tilt their head even more, like confused at it. But uh, Magnar, upon you like speaking in goblin as well um, and mentioning the name Grenell, they they kind of stop and go, you know Grenell. Yeah, I mean, I, get, I don't say that actually because I don't understand Goblin. No, they say this not, in I guess they say this, this in common. common? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah oh, we're, yeah. We're good friends with Grenell. Yeah. Super good friends. Yeah, we just uh, just axed up a old Hobgoblin homeboy back in the back. What was his name? Something big. He's a big fella. Dern. Dern. Yeah. Dern. Yeah, Dern caught a slapping. Yeah. Yeah. He's cruising for a bruising. Yeah, mm-hmm. he Don't caught bruised. These, caught these hands. Uh, and they go, the, the goblins kind of go, wait, you, you, you defeated Dern? Yeah, super yes. defeated. Like, well, like depending how you feel about now. that. Yes. Depending <laughs> if you like that. Yes. If you hate it, we're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so the two goblins kind of look at one another and they, they clap a little bit and go, then maybe, maybe we can go home. Oh, but wait, the wizard wouldn't be happy about that. No, the wizard wouldn't be happy about that. That's okay. We should, we're we here to defeat the just wizard. Keep, we'll just keep, we'll just keep mushing. And they kind of no, go back to, to motion. Wait, wait, where? Wh- hey, question. Fix yeah. that problem. Something is snoring over in the other room. Do you know what that is? They're sleeping. Who's they? Them. The other goblins? Yes. Like you. Same size. I, same everything else. I mean, I we haven't measured ourselves to one another. <laughs> when but... you stand next to one another, the same size as you. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I haven't think about. I mean, I've been doing slave labor for like the past year or so. You know what? You are any leave. of them are any of them larger than me? No. Are any of them larger than this kid? So, <laughs> from across the room, you kind of <laughs> hear like waking up. And one goblin sort of strolls out behind you and goes, I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. All right, don't worry. You can go back to bed. Uh, do you know where the wizard is? We're here to defeat the wizard and end his tyranny. All right. Oh. A little quieter. And at, the, and at this yelling, they all kind of go, oh. And, 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 and like one of the one in the room kind of retreats and closes the door. And the other two go, oh, the wizard will be mad. And they, they start uh, crunching the fungus underneath their feet. Which way is the wizard? Uh, he's he's in his sanctum hey look what's your name 
uh, Rebo. Rebo? Rebo. Right, Rebo, you can stop doing that. You can leave now. No one's going to bully you any longer. No, the, the wizard will know. No. The, the, wizard's, the, wizard, the wizard knows the wizard. magic. Yes, the wizard knows magic. You do you. Just gonna point go. us in the direction of that wizard and we'll yeah. sort it out. All right, Oscar, yeah, can you make a persuasion check for me? Oh, fiddlesticks. Uh, yeah, I sure can. Come on, baby. It's a five. Right. Yeah. So the goblin, the goblin, kind of, kind of shakes his head and he goes, "No, no, no, no. You, you don't know how powerful this this wizard is. Even, even if we we left, you would find us." They, they kinda... I want to, I want to switch to goblin. Okay. So I'm speaking their language. I want to pitch that we just, we just dealt with Dern. And the wizard is next on our list. So what you should do is stay here and crush the stink berries, whatever you're doing. So then even if it doesn't work <laughs> out, as far as the wizard knows, you didn't even see us. All you got to do is point us in his direction and cross your fingers. But but what if you don't defeat the wizard? Well, then you haven't really lost anything. Yeah, you're still squishing berries. Look, you know, we'll do our best. But all we need you to know is just point us in the direction. You can do that, surely. Uh, Magnar, can you make a persuasion check for me? Oh, I'll say on, with mate. advantage. Yeah. It's a 13. All right. So with the 13, the goblin kind of tilts its head to the side and goes, mm. well, um. Mm. Oh, wait. No, it's not. It's, uh. Huh? It's a 15. It's 15. Sorry. Ah, Okay. Well, I'll say the goblin at, at a fifteen. The goblin's a little bit more inclined, and goes, "Um, well, uh, you you can find him in in his grove. There there should be a way to get to the the the, the gardens, um, through through the, the 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 southeast chamber or through the the northeast chamber." And that's you won't regret this, goblin. Down. I we'll... say, my dog and goblin. Uh, the goblin kind of like t tilts its head and goes, "I have not been called the my dog in so long." <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Uh, these little homies are okay. All right. Well, um, let's get moving. Yeah, I think that yeah, these things, these little homies, can't help us that much. So, okay, we let us roll out. Yeah. All that's, right. That, that's the thing we say now. We're yeah. off to see the wizard. Yeah. So as you as you leave this room and you start heading down towards the the far room on the left, yeah, uh, you kind of pass by uh, one of the chambers uh, on on your right, this this the middle kind of one, uh, and you see the door is slightly open, uh, and you can see this like rat strapped to a a uh, a table, and it appears to have several like fungi and growths coming out of it, and there's two goblins that are sort of like um, observing it and 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 like poking it. With a stick at times, and 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 then and then nodding at one another, uh, and then uh, scrawling something down on like a piece of paper. All right, just like nod. That's where yeah. the fungus rat came from. Okay, yeah. good, cool. Uh huh. Wait, can I can I go up and be like, "What you doing?" Uh, so you you put you poke your head in, um, and one of the go the other goblin is like kind of like, "Oh, I, who are you?" We're here to see the wizard. <laughs> Are you new subjects? No. Then Maybe. What, Unclear. What business do you have with the wizard? Uh, he's going to see if we're fit to be subjects. Oh, hmm. Hmm. What's the wizard's name? And he kind of like narrows his eyes at you. Oh, they wouldn't tell us because they said something about conflict. <coughs> Bellic. And... <coughs> what? Bellic. His name is Bellic? Bellic. Yeah. Well, I didn't remember that, so Neo didn't. Neoma didn't remember that. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the 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 goblin kind of <sighs> tilts its head and goes, mm. "Um, my friend might know though. They don't tell me much. I'm not very there. Uh, Meg." Maggie. 
okay. Uh, I walk up and rattle off in Goblin, the same conversation I had with the other ones, but quicker. Hey, what's up? We just killed Dern. We're here to see the wizard. We're here as consultants. We're just going through. <laughs> the Goblin goes, ah, oh, well, as a consultant, what what would you do here? And the, the Goblin kind of points towards the, uh, the rat, and you can see that, like, these tumors appear to be kind of, like, woody and fruit-like in a way. Um... And uh, also, Magnar, kind of, you know, popping your, your butt in, into the room there a little bit. You see on the far corner, there is a fancy crystal vial that it seems to have some sort of, like, juice in it. Mm. See, uh, well, what you got to do is you got to take that vial and spritz that rat up real good. Get it real moist. You want your rat to be slick as can be. Good luck uh, with that. Uh, the goblin tilts its head a little bit and goes, well, that's what we did. That's what does this and he like points at the rat why would that why would we why would we put more we got you got to do it more that's that's the whole thing make a persuasion check for me or just let's say a deception check that's an 18 dog the rat the goblin goes the goblins kind of look at one another and the other one kind of nods and goes that that does make more sense, doesn't it? If we apply more of the, the elixir to the rat, then that will speed the process. You should write that down. The other ghost goes, meh, and, like, starts scrawling things down. Very good, very good. Well, you you know the way, I'm sure. And, like, he points through the north uh, the northeast chamber. Thank and you very much. waves you away. Huh. Wow. Bye. As we're, as we're walking, I'll kind of whisper to each other, it looks like some of the goblins are still loyal to the wizard. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, makes full sense. Okay, all right, we'll we'll sort that out. Okay, uh, well, so as you continue your your way on down through uh, the the chamber, you 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 the the room, you get to the northeast chamber, uh, and uh, the the door appears to be shut. Well, I try it. Is it locked? No, it's not. It's open. Yeah. So you open on up the door, uh, and the inside. <laughs> We're all so. I just keep you on your toes from time to time. Yeah. So you open it up, and you you see this appears to be kind of like a storage room of weapons. Um, yeah. There's like a, a couple like scimitars oh. and some bows uh, there on there, you and you see a door on the eastern wall. Well, hold up on that door. Let's let's investigate <laughs> these weapons. <laughs> are you gonna? Are, are you t you're checking out the weapons, Magnar? Oh yeah, you bet I am. All right, roll me an investigation check. Bet your sweet bippy he is. <laughs> Uh, investigation that is a 17 okay so with a 17 uh you kind of look at all these uh these weapons and they they appear to be kind of crude and of, of, of goblin make and stuff um there's uh, about five of these sort of battered scimitars there's about six short bows and uh like 40 arrows sort of littered in different little quivers none of them really are of exquisite make or anything like that they're just kind of your traditional stuff yeah, this is all trash stink weapons. Uh, Tully, if you need arrows, I guess, but they're pretty crappy. Oh, yeah. Um, is there an archery skill I could roll to see if those are worth taking at all? I am getting medium on arrows right now. Uh, I mean, they, they would just be your standard arrows. Probably about the same as the ones that you're currently holding. Okay. I would say restock. I mean, in a pinch. How I mean, many are there? There's 40 of them. I, I currently have 15. I now have 55 arrows. There you go. Um, it is a little bit, uh, like they probably won't all fit in your quiver. Um, but you can certainly keep them in your bag and stuff like that as well. All right. I'm down. Um, you do also still have that plus one arrow, I believe too. Uh, it, we, it, technically it was an unidentified arrow. Oh yes. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's a magic arrow. So I have, I have an unidentified magical arrow. <laughs> Sick. There we go. Right. Uh, so uh, you see this other, there's a door on the eastern wall that kind of leads out of here. Okay. So uh, Behind one that of these doors open, is huh? be something. So I'm, I'm ready. I will uh, step up and open the door as one would open any door. All right. So you open this door as one would open any door by pushing it. And, <laughs> uh, and inside, as you open, you enter a very, very large room. Uh, it's, it's more of like a long hall. Um, 
and you see again all this luminescent uh, fungus that sort of hangs from the ceiling and the walls and kind of grows in clumps on the flagstone floor um, and the light illuminates portions of um, the the carvings on stone walls that don't happen to be in, uh, covered in fungus and the the carvings uh, appear to sort of depict dragons in like various stages of raining fire down onto terrified people um, and uh, Soil and kind of compost cover the, the, the floor, um, which allows a variety of, like, plants uh, to grow on it. Um, and you can see several doors along this hall that seem to enter into our, our God, I always screw this word up, uh, arboretums. Um, there is one way down at the end to the south. There's one way up to the north. And along the walls, there appear to be two sort of on the western wall. Um... And you see a little bench that uh, contains simple gardening implements. Uh, it kind of stands on the west wall. I have a bad feeling that this wizard's going to be some type of plantomancer. Yeah. Or, or like a gardener? Like a gardener. Like a gardener. But like a gardener. What's so spooky about a gardener? What if a wizard turns you into a tree, Oscar? That's pretty spooky. Well, I mean... I don't want to be a yeah, tree. Yeah, I mean, we all signed up for that when we started being adventurers, so... There is a chance, there's a non-zero chance that one of us is going to get turned into a tree at some point. But but in Not the stories, trees anyway. But in stories, they always throw like fireballs, and it's exciting. I don't want to go as a tree. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd, use, I'd rather catch a tree than a fireball. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, let's, let's keep our eyes peeled for weird plant magic. Trust me, Tully. Please. If you turn into a tree, I promise to water you. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Magnar. That means a lot. Yeah. Can everybody make me a perception check? Oh, no. no. <laughs> 14. Good lord, dude. Matt, 20. Ooh. 19. I got a 7. All right. Well, uh, Neoma and Magnar and Tully, uh, you're able to hear a noise. You, you hear what appears to sort of be like scuffling and, shuffle and shoveling uh, in, uh, in, in one of the, the far uh, western... Um, Arboretums, uh, and you also kind of see a very large figure, sort of down by uh, that bench I mentioned earlier, uh, sort of fiddling with some of the things on that bench. How large is very large? Like humanoid, or giant, or super giant? Uh, I would say. Let me do a totally nondescript uh, lookup of the exact size of this. <laughs> they are large. I would oh. say uh, about eight feet tall. Like a big chonker. Yeah. yeah. How big were the hobgoblins? Uh, hobgoblins are about like six They're feet like, tall. Six foot. They're like, yeah. They're they're like humanoid. Like size. normal humanoid. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is, this, is, this is a large lad. This is an absolute unit. Uh, and humanoid looking, furry, plant-like. You can tell that they are furry. And they appear to be wearing um, various sort of like leather um and uh and have uh what uh, a sickle kind of strapped uh in on their on their back do i have any idea what type of creature this is uh do you let's have you make a check here that would probably be the uh, hmm. best way to go about doing this like nature or survival let's do a nature check all right i roll a nature check and i get a 14 all right uh, so you don't know much about them, but you can tell this is bigger than a hobgoblin, not as big as a troll. This is most likely a bugbear. Ooh, oh. I think it's a bugbear. I've what never seen one. A bugbear. In... What's a bugbear is like a bigger hobgoblin, a bigger, meaner hobgoblin, but furry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and do I know they're mostly hostile, or could this one be a friend? Typically, they're kind of they're much like hobgoblins and and other various tribes. They're they're you know they've got the reputation of being quite quite uh, dangerous. All right, so well, I don't think it's okay. noticed us yet, and I could. Well, I was going to whisper and say, okay, so we're in the wizard's lair, probably. Everything from this part forward, probably pretty chill with the wizard. Probably not so chill with us. Are we agreed on that? I think so. Yeah, because I mean. We could, you know, gingerly go up and like, you know, say, hey, how's it going? Or we attack first. How do, you know, I, I like both. Yeah. You know me. 
as you're as you're discussing this, this, by the way, yeah. you do hear from the bugbear kind of like them humming a tune. Oh, oh. like a friendly little song. Look, uh, yeah, n- nothing that you can quite piece together, though. I think we go with the hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, see what happens. Yeah, yeah look, I'm just uh, saying I can I can take a punch. So yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm, I'm pretty good at talking. I can just yeah. introduce uh, myself. Here we go. What's up, brother this bugbear? Well, well, so Tully oh, yells out, what's up, brother <laughs> bugbear? Uh, and the the humming stops, and the bugbear kind of turns around. Uh, and uh, you see uh, the they, they kind of they, they, they face you, and you can see that they are most certainly not a brother uh, bugbear. This, this uh, female bugbear looks at you uh, and, and goes, well, hi there. How's it going? And who might you be? We're the Moonlighters. Oh, well, isn't that great? All right, what, what, what are you doing all the way down here? We're missing our friends. Who are, well, who are your friends? Come, Tom- come on in and come on in. I see y'all hanging out in the doorway there. What's your name? You're so friendly. Well, I'm Lita, and I am the head gardener around here. Well, except wow. for, you know, old Bellic up there. Cool. Lena, you seem super friendly. Come on, let's go in. We're looking for a brother and sister. Oh, okay, I think we should. I motion for Neoma and Tully to go in, and Oscar and I will hang back and scan the room. Oh, yeah. you must mean those two who came through earlier. Yeah, they're they're definitely working with uh, Bellic up in his chambers. Mm. Oh, and how far away is Bellic's chambers? Oh, well, you're saying you don't know. Well, we've never been down here before. This oh. is our first time, so we're getting our bearings. Well, where are my manners? Oh, we should be taking care of you if you're going to be working down here as one of the newest subjects of Bellic. Oh, hey, hey, um, oh, shoot. Uh, John, could you come in here? And uh, you hear a little bit of, like, cr- like rattling as oh. a, uh, as a uh, skeleton kind of pops its head out of one of the arbitoriums and it's got, like, a shovel over its uh its its arms and it goes what oh well we've got some visitors here and they've never been down here before and the other goes ah oh, well why don't you grab a shovel there's plenty of plenty of plants that need tending to oh we're not exactly before we're supposed to do any work we're supposed to talk to Bellic. yeah oh well well, Bellic doesn't see anybody personally, so that's that that's odd. I know, that's what we said, but that's what we were told to do. We were requested. Can you make a deception check for me? Come on, TQ. 19 plus whatever my modifier is. I'd have to find it. Hold on. Uh well with a 19, I will say that you do manage. Uh she... plus five. Okay. Oh yeah. So so you've got a 24. Yeah. Uh, so she she kind of nods and goes, "Oh, well that that's just so odd. Ugh, typically, I'm taking care of all these new recruits that come on down here, but I guess if you're coming in as one of his subjects, he'd probably want to hear from you personally." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what well, we think. I do know, I do know that he's quite busy right now, and he's he's very busy. So why don't you hang out around here? And when he comes on by back, I think you'll be here later in the day. You can just say hello to him. How long do you think that'll be? Oh, well. Oh. Hey, Betty, when's the last time that old Bella came down through here? And another skeleton kind of pops her head, head out and has a rake. And she's like, oh, I think Bella came by maybe, uh, oh, it would have been last year or so for sure. Oh, we can't wait that long. It's not that we can't wait that long. It's that we were told not to. We knew that this would happen. And we were told that if it was offered to wait, we were to kindly thank you and then explain that we were to be directed to the chambers. Hmm. And who told you that? We got a letter from Bellic sent through Courier. Gosh, I cannot remember the name of the Courier now. I'm sorry. It's been a long way here. Courier. Hmm. Sent through goblin hands. Oh, that that would make sense. Um, but goblins aren't really allowed outside of there. Well, you know what? I've given you the third degree. It's okay. Here, here. It's come, really odd. 
Why don't Why don't I just direct you to where you need to go? We would really oh, appreciate thank you. that. That'd be great. So the first thing that you need to do is head on back the way you came. I'm sorry, what? Listen, I've seen an adventurer or two in my time. And let me tell you, it's not often that one pulls over the uh, the wool over my eyes, the fur, you know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, Bellic, Bellic's never dealt with the courier before, and it would just be... Oh, it would just be super weird if they went by without my noticing. I passed the deception check. And then <laughs> yeah, this is going to get ugly. Um, I'm sorry. I'm super confused. I'm just doing what I was told. Oh, well, let me tell you. As is number one in command, I would say, if you just wait here, He'll come on through. I'm sure he can sort this whole thing out. Here, grab a shovel. And she, like, picks up a shovel from beside the uh, the bench and sort of thrusts it into Tully's hand, who I assume is right there as well. I just put my hand in front of it, and I'm like, no, no. We appreciate I, that. Look, I want to say in Dwarven to the party, if any of them speak Dwarven, I can't remember. I don't. Yo, what's up? I do. All right. Okay, Tully, this is not going great. Uh... <laughs> I really so hope so, so worth I noting, really Magnar, you are not beside Tully. Yeah, you so see anything you that out. you would be saying to him would be quite odd. Well, I guess. I mean, I thought we would just be behind them. I don't know how how far. Oh, away sorry, because you said you were hanging back quite a bit. Well, I just wanted to like be defensive and like watch the room rather okay. than go into. I would, uh, I would, yeah. Look, we need to see Bellic, and we need to see Bellic today. We need to see Bellic now it's important hmm. Hmm. what will it what will it take for us to get through oh i don't know say i do we need you to you come through? from we'll the top back. you come from top side don't you mm -hmm. do you say have, yes do you have any of that oh what's it called they have it's it's like a it's like a, a water but it tastes really sweet it comes from like a like a, a really sour fruit juice yeah it's a it's a kind of juice but i can't remember the name of it it's like the, uh, the, the fruit's really sour wine alcohol so uh uh another gob or uh, uh skeleton pokes its head in and says she's talking about lemonade you idiots Whoa, okay. First of all, you're a That's skeleton. That's uncalled for. Like that. like, yeah. <laughs> and secondly, there are way too many sour beverages to be like, no, we, we'll slam lemonade. Yeah, lime, <laughs> lemon. Apple. Or cranberry. Yeah, cranberry. In your explanation, you said two things that make lemonade literally first. All right. Juice. Can we just bust these people up? I'm tired of their. I'm, 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 I'm to this, this close, and I don't even like to fight. Look, okay. You know what? We need to find the twins. We need to do it today. We're here to do that. Oh well, I I can't let you through. Bellic will just be so upset at me. You let me through. The future greatest adventure okay. in the world will okay. owe you a favor. It's okay. Yeah. Um. If we have lemonade, you'll let us go through. Lemonade. Sure. Really? Sure. Okay. Um. Well. On conjure lemonade. Well, what's <laughs> really funny, um, is that. Uh, <laughs> go on. Yeah. What's funny, darling? I happen to have um. I need to double check because yeah. I added this yeah. recently and I don't remember. Press the digitation can be done by a sorcerer, right? Yes. Okay. Typically, so I was yeah. just gonna say, I was like, do you have it? Because I added that and digitation. yeah. So uh, I happen, it's just really funny. Lemonade has, happens to be one of my favorite drinks. Um, so I pull out my water canteen, but what I do is when I turn to pick it up, I cast prestidigitation on it to make it taste and smell like lemonade. Okay. Um, and then I go and I pull it forward and I go it's a little odd because it's my home recipe, so I hope it's okay, but you could try it. 
I made it fresh before we came down here, which isn't too fresh, but if it's good enough, maybe then you'll let us pass. <gasps> wow! What a convenient set of circumstances. And she takes the uh, <laughs> she takes the 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 flask and uh, and begins drinking. Goes, oh, well, that was just delicious. All right, you seem like you seem like you're on the. I'm sorry, I gave you such a hard time. Typically, you know, we just don't get visitors here, and well, you know, Bellic can get in some of those really angry moods. So yep. I had to do my due diligence. Anyways, if you head up, just just go on north of the North Arbitorium. Uh, oh, I think it's to the right. Yeah, you head on down to the right, and you should find your way. Just follow through the rooms. You'll get to his grove. Lickety split. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, Bye. You finish up that lemonade. I'll grab that when I come back out this way later. All right. Sounds or good. Or whatever, yeah. Thank you so much. Not a problem. <laughs> so as we're walking out as soon as we're out of earshot i'm going to kind of whisper to them do you think it's actually to actually to the right or do you think it's to the left do we trust her words i don't trust anything that came out of that mouth of that right, we're gonna go this way and then go left what do you well, think i mean she did seem happy with the lemonade so yeah i mean i think that we could probably take whatever happens so you pick you let's, vote. let's go right i think let's we should go right. listen all to right. her instructions all right, yeah, all right. right. so as uh, you, you, you venture on up, you kind of see um, some, you, you, you would be passing by at least one of the arbitoriums to your uh, right. Um, you, you do notice <laughs> in, in, in that one uh, that uh, there appears to be like, like, the chamber looks like it's been scorched. Um, and like all the fungus and whatnot just is straight up dead. Like there's nothing living inside of that. Okay. Uh, and you reach the northmost arbitorium. Um, and inside, there's all kinds of plant life in there, different kinds of mushrooms, uh, some like very uh, like dull colored flowers, a lot of a lot of plant life uh, that would thrive in very little low light sort of scenarios. And they've all been taken care of very nicely by uh, by Lita and the skeleton friends. Um, and in this arbitorium, uh, there are actually three uh, uh, a ways away so to the right and to the left of this uh you see kind of staircases uh and right beside you you also notice a uh as you're entering just kind of like just to the left there's also a door okay mm -hmm. sorry i'm really sorry my tinnitus kicked in what where what was the other door it's just to the so there's a door to the right and the left and then there's okay. just a door right around kind of beside you to the left as well which of those three is the one that matches with the directions of which way we were instructed to go? Well, there's one to the right, as, as she said there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we'll take the one to the right. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Follow the guys. Okay. So uh, you, you walk on down, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you enter to the right. Uh, and as you're, as you're walking down, uh, you notice that the plant life continues to, to emanate from these the hallways and you enter sort of this strange underpass and and sorry the the staircases actually are leading down um and the staircase descends about 15 feet um and there is an eight foot high uh kind of it's like eight feet it's about eight feet tall stone corridor um and as you are venturing on down you notice uh, there is a door to your left on the far end of the hallway, and just a little bit down, there's a, another, a second door on your left. Um, nothing, nothing really of note in this room. It's still uh, um, illuminated by the the fungus, mm -hmm. um, so you, you can see quite well. Plus the illumination from Magnar's uh, Warhammer. All right. Well, so, I guess we. Yeah. We just have to. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just saying, let's just keep going. Well, there's only one door? There's two doors. There's two doors? We're on the right, yeah. so we just go whichever one's on the right. So yeah, as both I, on the left. Like, as I, as I mentioned, on whichever one down, is, Whichever one is to the right of the... the when you look at it... There are no screen. doors to the right. No. There's two doors to the left. Yes. So which door is on the right when the you look farthest, forward? Furthest one. Yeah. Right? So, like, go that way. Okay. All right. That's, that's that's good. To me. I like that logic. Sure, yeah, I love that logic. Okay, oh, yeah. so you skip on past the first door, 
uh, and you get to a uh, what appears to sort of be uh, this strange gate. That's what this door looks like. Um, and uh, as you kind of peer in through, uh, you can kind of see um, that uh, there's kind of like twigs and roots, and they're sort of all piled onto the floor of the chamber. Yeah. Um, and uh, th- that's kind of as much as you can see without opening the door. But you do also see that this this chamber is vast. Um, the the ceiling sort of stretches up above, and um, there are all kinds of like bushes and saplings and woody plants in there. This looks like a cave that looks like a nest or a den. Yeah. I don't. Tully, you know anything about this? Tully. Yeah. Like a it's den? Not... Like Tully, right. Tully says his roll... own name. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't actually know which one you said there. Uh, should I do a nature or survival check to be like, is this a, is this the den of a monster? Sure. You you definitely can because you haven't entered the room yet. Uh, you're okay. not really able to identify too much. Natural 20 on survival. Okay. So you can... You, you wouldn't really be able to ascertain if like any sort of creatures would necessarily live here. But you can tell that this is a little bit more natural than the growth that is in the uh, arboretums and, and whatnot that you see that you that you already passed by and stuff. Uh, this this is probably grown just on, sort of on its own in this in this cavern. All right. Does does Tully's check tell us if we walk on these sticks, they're going to be breaking and making noise and give us away? Uh, you from with the, from looking at them from afar, you can't tell if this is going to crack and make a loud noise. Really, no. Okay, how are we feeling about... uh... I'm just saying it it doesn't look like a wizard's thing. Yeah. uh, Chamber. And and it's quite big, so we could just, like, crack open the other door. Yeah. Yeah, Before walking in this giant hole in the ground. Yeah. Oh, I feel that. I feel it. I'd rather check out the other door. All right. Let's uh, pop the other door and take a quick... So they're just Again, the room, the room back, basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, who you, you you try the door um, and it appears to be locked. Oh. Huh. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, if we're this far, they're not going to lock anything. That's like, she wouldn't say like there's going to be a locked door. So we probably go through the big weird mm-hmm. cave thing, I guess. Yeah. I think right. it's garden. It could yeah. be. Yeah, that's fair. All right, let's investigate. Let's open the gate. Okay, so uh, go yeah. on through. So you enter on in uh, through this grove gate, um, and uh, as you're sort of peeking in, you you do notice within. Uh, can it actually can everyone do a perception check for me? Yeah, uh, it's a five ball. Yeah, I got a five too. I got a six. I haven't yeah, rolled over a ten as well, on. actually. <laughs> Yeah. All right, we all roll six or less. All right. Uh, so you hear and see nothing. You're kind of preoccupied with kind of entering into a sneaky, uh, in, in through a, a spooky gate, essentially. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the room? You know, we don't spot little things, mm-hmm. but... So the- much, much like I mentioned when you were poking kind of your head in. So this is a, a large chamber uh, to the right. Uh, there does appear uh, to be... It, it kind of opens up into a larger cavern that uh, has a bunch of trees um, and uh, all kinds of like fungus and briars and bushes. Have we and left a building at this point and now it's a cave or it, is it just a cavernous room? It does sort of appear to be a little, it, it, it looks like it's more of a cavern than than like anything from the Sidla Citadel, but you can see like, bitch, uh, uh, like bits of um, like wall kind of uh, embedded into the earth and whatnot. But this definitely feels more like a cave or like a cavern than inside of a citadel at this point. All right. Um, and within the room, as you kind of all step in, uh, kind of looking around and whatnot, you notice uh, suddenly four goblins are all kind of looking at you. Uh, oh, hey. And uh, the uh, there appear to be like different kinds of fungus and whatnot on like a little uh, table. Um, and they're all sort of uh, poking on it. Uh, and and moving these uh, from little like from like little bins to little bins, um, and they kind of like tilt their head at you and go, black. Well, they don't because I can understand I, that. I point they to. Go, 
Well, so for Funk, for for that was for the rest of the people. So for Magnar, sure, sure. Um, uh, it they they're going like, what? Who's this? <laughs> I go, hey, how's it going? Uh, friends of Grenell coming down, just checking things out, uh, making sure everything's above board. Uh, everything looks good here. Uh, we're due to see the wizard as well, Bellic. Uh, could you point us in the uh, the uh, direction? We got a little turned around here. Mm, mm. You said Grenell sent you, and it's talking still in Goblin. Yep, yep. Grenell, I uh, was just with uh, Grenell last night. Uh, doing great, actually. Everything is good upstairs. They're, uh, you know, living large, Goblin style. And uh, yeah, she just sent us on down to 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 meet up with Bellic. Mm. And you took out Dern, did you say? Uh, nope. I don't think I mentioned Dern, did I? Oh, so Grenell sent you down without the approval of Dern. No, not what I said. Uh, they, we spoke with Grenell and Dern, and they sent us down to see the wizard uh, and just check on things and make sure and then deliver a report back up. Uh, can you make a deception check for me? You guys have lied your way through this entire dungeon so far. What was it? Uh, that's a six. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Nice. The goblins kind of look at one another and they're like, mm, that doesn't add up. We're going to have to take you back. And they kind of, no, they no. Sort of, they well, sort of we don't know that. Weapons. We don't know what's happening. Yeah, yeah. We just hear. How's well, it going? No, that's, I mean, look, we, we just spent a whole, I, I'd give them a thumbs up. Uh, look, I just spent, uh, we spent a long time getting down here. We, they really needed this report. Um, I don't think that's necessary. I don't want to interrupt what you're doing. You look busy. We're busy. We're all busy here. So, what a, you know, <laughs> if you just point us in the direction of the wizard, and then uh, I'm sure he's busy too. He doesn't oh, want to be I, held up. I absolutely believe you, but you know, it'd be bad if we didn't do our due diligence. So we're just gonna put you in the hold, and then you know, he can come later. And, and you, the three of you, can see that they're all kind of taking out their 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 swords and whatnot they have strapped around their waist. That doesn't. That look, I understand. That. Yeah. I just like, I'm like. I look back and give him a thumbs up, and then draw my warhammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. It's All right. fighting time. Okay. Uh, time. Everybody, roll for initiative, please. Hey, above a ten. Yeah. Nice. You Is did. It an nice. All right. It's an second. eleven. Yeah. <laughs> I got a two. I have Ooh, a seventeen. Right. I have a seventeen. Okay. I need to build this. Uh, all right. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Get that uh, initiative tracker going. Um, all right. So I will ask for your initiative, uh, Marks, in one second here. I just need to make sure that everyone else in the audience can see this very oh so lovingly um, because it's really silly. And also, you guys managed to talk your way through so much stuff that uh, I am flying by the seat of my pants now. Nice. So, uh, <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Nioma, what did you get? 17. 17. All right, Erky, who is also traveling, uh, or didn't actually travel down with you, he stayed up uh, up top. Sure. Um, he is not here. One second. I accidentally had him attached to you all, um, but he oh, didn't actually come down Oh, we need to you. update our hit points for you after we leveled up. Uh yes, sure. We can do that. We can do that later. It's okay. truly not important right now. Okay. Um boop -a -doop -a -doo. I forget how to actually remove somebody from here. Um great. Toggle menu. This is really annoying. I'm just gonna skip by Erky every time. Tully, what did you get? Uh I also got a 17. Uh Neoma, what's your dexterity? My dexterity is like the plus one? Okay, I, I have a dexterity of 17. So does that does that make me go before? Uh well I can I can figure that out. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you want it? I'm 13. Okay. Yeah. Uh Oscar, what'd you get? Eleven. Eleven. Great. Magnar. Not 13 in age. I'm just gonna clarify that right now. Yeah. Magnar, what did you get? Two. Okay. And then the rest of the goblins got various things. Is there any way for me to just there we go. Let's do that. Um, oh, shoot. Why didn't the goblin show up? Sorry, everyone. I'm doing this uh, a little bit unorthodoxly. Ben had computer trouble, too, so he's doing great. Uh, great, 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 great. There we are. All right. Yeah. Oh, Everything no. One of them goes okay. first. 
So uh, the goblin that was talking to Magnarn is like, oh, yeah, 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 we'll do our due diligence. hi and, and like <laughs> uh, lashes out with its it, with its sword. Also on record as being the first goblins to say the term due diligence. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and rolls a 15. Does that hit you? Oh. I have 16. Okay. Uh, so the, the goblin misses. Yeah, there. Um, <clears throat> so now it is Tully's turn. Uh, so I realize you have the goblins numbered one to four in the initiative tracker, but provided Tully doesn't have access to that, there are four goblins in the room. I'm looking there, around. There are four goblins around. Yes. Uh, you, which you, one you, is? Well, these were the ones that were you. You could clearly see them all. Uh, they were in, in a here. line and they're facing us, or did they start to surround us at some point? No, they were all like they were at the table with their their scimitars and stuff like that. Okay. Um, or sorry, uh, long swords. Uh, uh, I'm going to make a value judgment that if one of them was going to run at me, I will shoot that one with my bow and arrow. Well, they're all advancing towards you, and one just ran and attacked Magnar. Okay, uh, well, I won't, so, I won't sure. hit that one then. All right, so you you take a shot at one of the goblins coming on at you. What'd you get? Yeah. Uh, I roll a 13. Uh, a 13 does not hit. Uh, the, the no. goblin kind of deftly uh, dodges out of the way of your arrow coming on in. Okay. Uh, Neo, what do you got? I would love to pull out these dice that I accidentally put away and then try to hit this bugger with a ray of frost. I would like to go everything I do is non-lethal. Okay, sure. It's a point of... Just so that you know. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, okay. which, which goblin are you shooting at? I will shoot at whichever one is just within my sight. Doesn't really matter. As long as just don't go for the one near. I like Maggie. Don't go for the one near Maggie. All right. So you've got uh, the one near Maggie. You've got the one that uh, Surge took a shot at. Are you taking a different one? Yeah, I'll, I'll do a different one. All I'll right. like push it out. Go for it. Um, so a 17 to hit you absolutely hit with a 17 all right. roll me some dabblage all right so we got a seven damage plus two not nine damage all, all right. right so uh with nine damage you completely managed to sort of freeze the goblins similar that you did to uh grack upstairs mm -hmm. um so he's frozen not dead. Do you freeze the head as well? Or is it kind of just like his body? Like, how would you uh, go about dealing normally? Non normally, I would do body, but I think with this one, I'm going to just cover the mouth because I don't want any screaming occurring. I'm going to think of this. So, so, so it's like running, frozen. It's like and here, it but he can still here. breathe. Like, he's got that no little no <laughs> Okay. It's very precise. Uh, I'm very precise at my job, okay? Heck yeah. All right. So, uh, we're going to say this goblin uh takes uh nine damage and is completely immobilized uh by by uh neo's uh ray of frost there um mm. so uh anything else you'd like to do on your turn neo uh, uh no i think i'm good um right. yeah i think i'm good all right so the goblin that surge uh took a shot at right mm -hmm. that totally took a shot at uh is like well all right uh -oh. heck this uh, and and charges on after uh, Tully and takes a swing uh, at ah. Tully with its saber. Uh, and what is your AC, friend? Fourteen. Great. This one rolled a twenty-four. So yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, I think that's a hit. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. I don't know. I want to see the. I want to see the tally. Yeah. Uh, so. Numbers, please. Uh, the the goblin manages to get up on, on you and slash at you with its uh. uh Longsword and deals seven damage to you. Jesus. Ow. Okay. Uh, I have That's nine hit points for damage. Anyway. All right. Um, and yeah, and the other one was about to go, but it is frozen and uh, just trying not to die by breathing <laughs> and it's freezing. And it's a very, very sad moment, really, for this goblin. So, Oscar, it is now your turn. Hell yeah, I'm gonna charge and try to slap the one that put his fucking hands on Tully. All right, it's yeah, it's it's right up uh, right up yeah. with you. Help so, me, Oscar. Um, I attack. I rolled a fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, a fifteen does indeed hit. Okay, sick. Um, 
it takes wow three damage why am i rolling so low on like everything this is did you ridiculous. roll a three are you do you uh, have real dice can you kiss them is this the problem yeah, it's digital okay. ah, the digital problem. dice will get you well, that, uh, kiss your monitor come on no i'm not gonna kiss my monitor um yeah three damage i guess i'm gonna actually i'm gonna use no nah, i'm not gonna use it Never mind. all right no. So you kind of you bop this this goblin uh, in the how do how, how do you attack this goblin? You're dealing three points of damage. It's hurting it. But yeah, it's I guess I like it would have been like a big warhammer swing, but it dodged. But I caught it with like my shield, you know, like a little jab under the chin. Like three damage isn't much, right? Like I just gave it like a little fucking how you doing? Like <laughs> Is it three damage enough to kill like a normal villager? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, but I mean, like a a, a crack to the bottom of your chin could kill somebody. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. so you kind of you bop this uh, you bop this goblin, yeah, uh, and uh, it kind of reels back a little bit, and it's like, and, and it just kind of looks a little bit more pissed. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, the other goblin, the the final one, uh, charges up and uh, saw that Neo is this mystical sorceress, and he's like, oh, I got to put this one down first, and uh, geek the mage, thank the mage, and yeah. uh, and and chases. Uh, on down over to to Neo, uh, and uh, ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. this one also rolls a uh, this rolls a twenty four. So uh, I claim magical. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, all right, Neo, you're gonna take four points of damage. What? Wow, why didn't you take four points of damage, Serge? I know. I I. I... Magic, it's some weird magic sorcerer shenanigans going on mm -hmm. here. Uh, and so, yeah, this goblin kind of slashes at you, maybe kind of hits one of your arms as you were uh, finishing, you know, delivering this uh, this spell. Uh, Magnar, it is now your turn. Okay, I will roll to hit the goblin that swiped at me and yelled, hi -ah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not yelling hi -ah. the goblin. Yell, hi -ah? Right, yeah. Don't you don't uh, you have a war cry yet? What kind of dwarf fighter are you? If you don't even okay, have I just want to make sure I hit. First. I'm not going to do a war cry and then whiff. That's just silly. Uh, fifteen. Uh, okay. A fifteen does indeed hit. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I hit, and as the war cry. Now that I've hit, and it wouldn't be silly. Uh, uh, my, I love the delayed cry. one. You're like bonk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my war cry is uh, diligence is due. And then I <laughs> deal nine points of damage. Nine oh, points of damage. Funny. All right. And this was the one that attacked you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you smash on down on this goblin and you just crack its skull and it falls over dead. Oh, so very, very dead. Okay. Yeah. That's very fatally. Yeah. Uh, Tully, it is your turn, friend. There's a goblin right up on you. It kind of recoiled a little bit from uh, Oscar swinging his hammer at you. Has it recalled enough that I can use my bow and arrow within within range, or do I have to try and disengage and step no, back? No, you could you could probably you. still use your bow. All right, pew pew. Uh, I try and pull some like Legolas move, where like duck and dive and and do stuff like that. Uh, and I'm so in my Very own head trying to yeah. that, that I I roll a a, a a one. I roll a crit fail. Ah, okay. So you're all up in your your head, being like, "Oh, this is gonna be the coolest thing ever." Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I need you to roll a second uh, attack. Uh, All right. Uh, this one's a 22. Great. Uh, so uh, as you're kind of going by, you loose this arrow looking super, super cool, uh, and you manage to peg uh, Magnar right in his butt uh, <laughs> with this arrow. Hey. Oh, uh, luckily I rolled poorly for damage. Five. All right. Uh, so Magnar, you take five points of damage to the butt. <laughs> mm. Nice shot, kid. Sorry. One in a million. <laughs> uh, Nyoma, it is your turn. Nyoma's just shaking her head like, lordy, lordy, lordy. Um, okay, so one is frozen. Mm -hmm. One is, then one's hurt and one has not been touched yet. Yes. Wait, that's the one, three. So the one that has not been touched is the one that is basically attacking you this very moment. It is up, up on you. I thought there were four. Yeah, one is already dead. Yeah, I turned one. Yeah, I killed one. Okay, so one's dead, one's frozen, one's hurt, one's healthy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um okay, I'll go for I'm gonna do another ray of frost at the healthy one. Um, sure. the one that's right up in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try to hit that one with it. Go for it. Nat 20. All hey. right. Roll me some crit damage, yo. 
five. And then do I roll another one? Yeah, it's two. Yeah. Isn't it, it's two damage dice? Twelve total. All right. So you are now. You're attempting to not kill things. I know Magnar wasn't really doing that, right? Magnar, you yeah. were just. Oh, no. It's yeah. just a no, Noma I... thing. Yeah. All right. So that is attempting to not kill. It could accidentally happen if, if, if so, accidents happen via some godly figure that controls a game. Maybe. Sure. But yeah. Absolutely. So. So this goblin uh, was attempting to stop what happened to his friend to any of his other friends, uh, but ultimately failed, and the, the same ding-dang thing happens to it. It is frozen right up to its nostrils uh, and, is, uh, and is, is just sort of frozen, and it looks very, very distressed at this whole sort of ordeal that is taking place. Uh, anything else you like during your turn? I'm good. All right, so the goblin that was attacking Tully... Uh, mm -hmm. just got smacked by Oscar, so it, and it kind of like barks at at, at Oscar. It's like, hey, yeah. that's not very chivalrous. Is and like, so that, did you say that in common? Yeah, yeah. Wow, can you even spell chivalrous? <laughs> really, you? Well, that's your response. Uh, that's your response, please. Yeah, that is my response. Uh, and the goblin just goes brah, and is yeah. like un unimpressed by your very very good comeback. Uh, and rolls a, what is your AC? 16. All right, this is a 14. Okay. So it does not hit. I block uh, it. You block it with your mighty, mighty Warhammer. Uh, another goblin, the, the first original frozen goblin uh, continues to be very, very upset that it's frozen. Oscar, it is your turn. Hell yeah. Um, I keep trying to help out Tully because he's getting slapped. <laughs> uh, I, that does not hit. That is a nine. That does not hit, no. So no. You guys are, um, you're both kind of caught up in your your yeah. Your I'm gonna ex I'm gonna expand one of my extra attacks. So I don't want Oscar to, or Tully to get slapped. Uh, so I'll use the Marshall, uh, the War Domain power. Sure. Yeah, you get to make an extra, extra attack. attack. Yeah, I rolled a 19. All yeah. Right. So how do you, how yeah. does this play out? Because you absolutely hit. Okay. So actually, yeah, what I, first roll your damage, and I can let I you know if you max can. damage. So I rolled All right. 12. All right. So this this goblin is undeniably dead. Uh, yes. So what are you doing? Uh, I give it like a, like, so it takes a swing at me. It misses. Like I block it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, and I block it, but I, I shunt it. Like it hits my shield and the, like, you could hear the ring. It's like, oh, if I could like hurts a little bit. And I just, I give him a kick to the stomach and then just like a big old war hammer to the back of the head. Yeah. This, yeah. This it's goblin, like a child. <laughs> this goblin is undeniably like completely dead. Yeah. Uh, all right. And Don't touch the child. <laughs> with that, was Hammer Brothers. Yeah, yeah. With that, the the final goblin has been defeated, uh, and uh, you are now uh, kind of in place with these these two other uh, goblins that are still alive, but oh so very frozen. Yeah. Oh wait, those are alive. Holy shit. Yeah, Neoma like uh, froze so, them up. So I don't like killing things if I don't have to. Um, yeah. But but what happens but I when like... I turn my back? I can't control. Like, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, but I don't like witnesses. It's killing it. It's like, thing. all right, what? Maybe we can ask him where the wizard is, because I just thought having one. Maybe we make another friend. Good job, Neoma. Explain Nioma. the situation. We yeah. could ask, but we just kind of pasted their buds. So I mean, that is what happened to Greg. You did. I didn't. All right. Do you want to thaw one of them enough so we can get some directions here? Because this want... place, we feel like we're leaving a castle, and now we're in a cave. Because I know we caves. Need directions, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. I mean, yeah, I can like, you. I can shape water and move the, the thing off of the mouth. That I can do that. Like, I sure. can move the ice off the mouth of one of them. So there's one that's right up in front of you, and there's one kind of over by the table where they were sorting out all these funguses and stuff. Uh, yeah. Which one would you like to? to interrogate up to the up to the boys you tell well, me and i'll go for it i mean you might want to do the interrogations because last time it didn't go too well oh yeah i mean i'll talk to them but you pick the one i talked to yeah well you're right there like just freeze that one up and i mean the opposite of that defrost its mouth and defrost its mouth okay all right i can do that maggie i love maggie it's such a good name i'm gonna call you that from now on and she just like trots over to the Right. Freezes, un unfreezes it, melts the mouthpiece. All right, so this was the one that was right up on you. So yeah. you unfreeze it, and it kind of like looks at you a little bit, like dazed and like like shivering, like its teeth 
its teeth are, sh are, are, are like chattering and it goes who are you in like in in kind of like uh broken uh common a little bit so we are here to save the goblins we were sent to basically i hear there's like a tyranny going on it's we're just we're just here to take care of the wizard problem and then you can go about your days you don't have to listen to anybody you can do whatever you want so we need to know where the wizard is mm, okay uh so the goblin kind of like chatters its teeth a little bit and goes we just we we just do his his, his dirty work but if you continue in, into the cavern you'll find him so we oh, just wow, continue right walking way. Yes. Can 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 you please just defrost me? Um, that's not up to me. Uh, <laughs> but what sure. could it possibly be up to? Well, I just do what I'm told, like you do what you're told, and that way I think so. I, 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 I for anything. Magnard's cleaning goblin brain off his hammer with a rag and says, look, we really did save Grenell. Like, we didn't need to go through all this, so we're, we'll unfreeze you. You can just go back up and chill with those homies. Like, it's a, it's a party up there. You'll have a great time. Oh, well, oh, okay. We, we, you just, you don't know the power of the wizard, and we, we are right to be skeptical. You don't know the power of the moonlighters. Okay. You know what? It's okay. Um, I'm really sorry that I had to freeze you. That's okay. We attacked you with swords. Okay. Uh, the most understanding goblin. He's like, yeah. Well, we kind of, we got to It's kind of our fault. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll unfreeze them both. So the the two goblins sort of fall to their feet a little bit, and uh, it it takes them a while to get up. But the other one, the one that you were talking to, since he was defrosted a little bit more recently kind of goes and helps the other one off and they sort of look at their friends who are dead on the ground and then we're dead continue continue like they they sort of shamble out of the room and start I going say out. find um what was our friend's name that goblin the grenel no the little one that, Gr that we made friends with before crack crack mm -hmm. i say go find crack he can explain it better as they're leaving all right, and they kind of like nod a little bit and uh, and and continue on their way and leave. Okay. All right. So, as you uh, as 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 they walk away, you're now left in this room, and and to your uh, to your right, uh, I need ever you you see this the large cavern, and and now that you're not no longer being set upon by goblins, I need everyone to do a perception check for me. Mm. All right. Jesus. I'm just yeah. twenty. Oh, there you go. Nice Funko. Um, I got a nine. Ten. Sorry. Ten. 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 Tully? Uh fifteen. Okay. I guess it's twenty one technically, but it was natural twenty. All right. And Neo. I can't tell if sixteen or nineteen. <laughs> because it's not marked. Uh oh. Uh oh, it's nineteen. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> well, either way, no matter what that role was, uh, you're able. Everyone, all of you, are able to. Uh, you look. You look into the cavern that's before you, and it is massive, and it kind of leads up. It, it, it's essentially this very large hill that's kind of going, uh, going up, um, and this is a grove essentially, um, and there are pale like spindly briars that are sort of all, all over the place there's it, there's a lot of like gnarled trees um and you can still see uh all these violent funguses uh lighting up this cavern um and at the very very top you can't quite see over the summit of it because you're kind of at the bottom but you do see this massive friggin gnarled tree that's reaching out high into the cavern okay. and um all the and the roots uh kind of are are going down the the hill uh of of, of the cavern in here like cool. and is this does this true tree have fruit on it uh you can't really make it out from here because this tree is very very far away but not from 
at the edge of the 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 ends of its uh um i guess branches um as a tree normally would you do not see any fruit no all right mm. well we are looking for a tree mm -hmm. that's a big tree we should mm -hmm. probably go check it out i feel like this is the right track yeah i'm always down to go look at some large wood yeah well the goblins did point us in this direction i'm just gonna move past that uh the goblins did point us in this direction right i mean the other thing we need to remember is our quest is to find the magic fruits or our friends or both like we don't even have to kill this wizard it'd be kind of cool it'd be kind of cool but like if we find the fruits and our friends no, I mean, that's absolutely fair. Bing, bang, boom, done by noon, right? Mm -hmm. We have done a lot of talking about how we're going to mess this wizard up, though. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. We, did kind of, we did kind of call that shot. Yeah. Look, I was feeling yeah. pretty confident until I just got stabbed by a goblin. Yeah. Look, I just got stabbed by a goblin. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Look, I mean, a lot of us got stabbed. A lot of us got shot in the butt. A lot of things happened. Uh, shot. You didn't even apologize for shooting Magnus. That's in the true. Fire. You haven't apologized yet. That's really rude. Do you need me to take the arrow out? Uh, that, I mean, if you want it back. I'm I mean, I'll do it. it. Um, I, 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 Do you know how to do it? I've taken arrows out of things before. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to heal him magically, but I could probably recover the arrow. I mean, I've done that hunting before. That's okay. I, I like just, that you just left this arrow in your butt. I like the idea that there's just an arrow sticking out. I'm calling it right now yes. in Funko's left ass cheek. There's an arrow sticking out about five points of damage worth. So it's like, here, just, just bend over, bend over on over this rock or stump or moss thing. Yeah. And I just like flick out a dagger. I'm like, all right. Uh, so what kind of role would you like me to do? Maybe a survival role to pull this out of his booty? Uh, I would like you to do a medicine role. Uh, and Magnar, uh, are you going along with this? Like, are you letting him uh, work his magic? Well, I, okay, look, if we're, we're going to just yank it out of there, I can have the medical professional do I'm this. Not, I'm not <laughs> yanking it out. I'm recovering the arrow. There's a different yeah, totally, You recover okay. it from yeah. dead things. Yeah, let's slow down. I'm with Maggie on that. Let's do this properly. I'm going to show you totally how to do it. Teach a man how to go. Yeah, that's a learning moment. All right, it's please, go ahead. Holly, okay. if you're going to do this, you're going to do it properly. And then okay. I will make a medicine check. Yeah. Uh, and Oscar, because you have a background in, yeah. uh, you know, like battlefield uh, healing and and well, like you were at least taught in that, and and this is sort of what you've done for a living is probably you've probably pulled an arrow out of some dumbass before. Yeah, um, yeah I see what you I, did. There. I'm going to give you uh, advantage. Well, it doesn't matter because I rolled natural. natural well, natural, natural, all so. right. So you <laughs> are going to pull this arrow out in such a good way, and yep. you can 100% role play this to your heart's delight. How does a natural 20 uh, play out of pulling this arrow out of Funko's butt? Funko is waiting for it to happen, and it's already happened. Who's Funko? I mean, sorry, Magnus is waiting for it to happen. He's like, all right, I'm ready. And it's like, oh, no, I did that like 30 seconds Who's ago. Magnus? It's out. It's out. Magnar. Maggie. Magnar. Maggie. Magnar. Magnar. Magnar is like, is it out? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's out 30 minutes. Or you were like, I'm ready. You can pull it out. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, it's out already. He's like, wow, I didn't even oh. feel it. Yeah, it's like there's nothing there. Nothing at all. There's not even going to be a scar. Here's the Fire other question. Stop. Is it so well done I, actually I can actually recover the arrow and use it again? Yeah, I would say the arrow yeah, is yeah. totally usable. You have uh, you have one uh, arrow with essence of Magnar's left buttocks on it. Ooh, I'm actually going to write that out as a unique item. Gross. Um, and you know what, uh, Funk? Uh, Oscar did such a tremendous job uh, kind of like taking that out and easing some of your pain. I'm going to get... Uh, you, you recover a single uh, health point. Ooh, thank you all so much. Excellent. Five-star rating. Yeah. Make sure you do something on Yelp about my rating. Yelp. So, you've now so healed you each other up, and before you lies this grove, and uh, the as I said, there are briars and uh, trees and whatnot uh, kind of at the, at the base of this gigantic slope sort of leading up to the, uh, the top of the hill where you can kind of see the, the tree sort of poking out from uh, behind the summit there. All right. Well, I think we should head towards the tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, let's creep on. So you all start walking along. Um, and uh, as you kind of approach up to the briars, you kind of notice that, like, this is going to be a little bit hard going. Like, these are they're, they're, these are thick uh, briars sort of littering the area. Um, yeah. And uh, so what I need you to do 
first is I need you to all make a uh, a constitution saving throw as you sort of step into the briars. So I have a question for you. Yep. Does this count as a forest? Uh, I would say yes. Okay. Because uh, my ranger ability, natural explorer, is a forest. Okay. So I am now in my favored terrain type. Uh, so just for, uh, do you want me to read out the ability? Sure. Yeah. All right. Your proficiency bonus is doubled for proficient skills when you make an intelligence or wisdom check related to it while traveling for an hour or more in the trays and train. Difficult terrain doesn't slow your group's travel and your group can't become lost except by magical means. You remain alert to danger even when you're engaged in another activity. You can move stealthily at a normal pace. You find twice as much food. We can track creatures. You learn exact numbers, sizes, all kinds of stuff. All right. So we, so we enter this forest and I'm like, yo. I'm home right now. I got this. Yeah. So Tully, uh, now typically this terrain would would trip all you up, uh, mm -hmm. and you would be making some rolls to get through uh, this terrain. Uh, however, because Tully is sort of at home in the brush a little bit, he knows his way around thick briars. So Tully, how are you getting? So this, I would say, there is easily, you know, traveling through this um, about thirty. 40 feet, uh, maybe even 50 of, of just rough, briary terrain that you're going to have to kind of go through, like ankle height even. Um, mm -hmm. How are you instructing your crew and, and how, what, what is going on here? So I like, I just go shh, close things and I close my eyes and I like smell and I go down and like put my hands in the earth for a second. I'm like, oh, hold on. It looks thick. But if you take a step to your left, you open it up and you're like, there's a natural path you can follow <laughs> through it. Right. There's, you know, the, 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 the forest has a natural path through it. Follow me this way. And there's a trail they didn't even see. Okay. So I, just, I look at Magnar and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I, I look at Oscar and then take a step to the right and just walk straight through the thistles, barging them all out of the way because I got a 25 on my constitution check. So I'm good. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Magnar, you are not following along with Tully. I'm following. Nope, I'm, I am. I am. Bra what's blazing a path? All right, Neoma, what are you doing? Laughing while this happens, like literally laughing at Oscar's reaction to Tully being able to do something effectively, mm -hmm. and Magnar charging through the brush as if to say, "Yeah, it's effective, but I don't give a crap." Just right. losing her mind, uh, but she did roll a uh, 19 plus five, so like 24 saving. Okay, so uh, are you choosing to walk along with Magnar through the Briar kind of patch, or are you following um, Tully? Or are you making your own right path? <laughs> I mean, I don't like that Magnar is alone. Um, I would say you're not too far away from one another. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Oh, it's I'm like not... right next to the path. I'm just oh, making a dick. You're about just it. making a point. This is very funny. She's losing her shit and then walking the path while losing her shit, laughing okay. the whole way. So, Oscar, Tully, and Neoma, you're kind of effectively uh, just sort of strolling along, and Tully's able to be like, you know, oh, there's a there's a a, a little a little bit of bri uh, briar here. You know, careful, step over it. Uh, and you are all fine, uh, Magnar. Uh, you are choosing to uh, take this path on your own. Oh, uh, and so yep. what is going to happen now uh, is there are about, like I said, about 45-ish, 50-ish feet of this briar ahead of you. Uh, and verbatim, you are going to make uh, a, uh, for, for about every three to five feet of movement, I require another constitution save uh, from you. And do. So uh, the first one you make it on through, you're like, hell yeah, go for it. And this is going <laughs> to take some time. <laughs> so, uh, all right, you did your first one. You got it. Yep. We're going we're gonna to do, you're, you're going to be, this is a challenge for Magnar alone. We're going to be making seven uh, constitution saving throws here. You yep. did your first one. Good. Okay. What's your second one? one is a 15. Okay. You're good. You continue on along. That's an 11. You're good. You take no damage. That's a 15. 
All right, you're good. You take no damage. And as this is going along, Magnar is kind of like, like, buh, 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 like you know, but bumbling through the the briar. And you guys, the rest of you, uh, have a very, very nice leisurely walk through. Like, like it's a little bit like you got to pay attention and stuff. But Tully's just like, yep, you know, you're just going through. I want to start Magnar's telling him about like the species of tree while we're there too. Yeah. All right, uh, Magnar, what's your next roll? Twenty three. Yeah, you're good. Uh, 17. Yeah, you're good. 25. Yeah, you're good. And that will be the last of it. So you, you come out on the other end of, uh, this briar patch just covered in like thistles and briars and like Tully and Oscar and Yoma, you, you, you folks come out on the other end, like just like looking at him. Magnar, you are covered in like twigs and thistles and all kinds of crap. Yeah. Maggie, you look ridiculous. Yeah, you look wild. I have a plus five to con saving throw, so I was all about that. Me too. All right. All right. So completely covered. Uh, I want to um, just shake myself like a dog and shake all the bristles off. All right. You you do do that. Um, you are now on the other end of these of of these thistles, uh, and uh, a couple feet up will be the summit of of, of this of this hill. And uh, you can kind of hear. Actually, can everyone do a perception check for me right yeah. now? Not twenty. I got a fourteen. Fifteen. Ten. All right. Uh, everyone but Tully, you are able to overhear, um, kind of what what sounds like mumbling, um, and uh, and uh, as well as like. I'm gonna say like the moving of of wood, like it, it kind of sounds like like tree branches snapping and stuff like that, just over because it's like you 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 are at sort of just before the summit kind of like reaches its its head kind of a thing, but you can kind of tell that it sort of plateaus out a little bit, and this would be kind of a large sort of uh, a, a space, um, and I'd say it's about approximately like twenty feet to the summit here. Right, well, let's get get walking, I guess. All right, how are you walking up uh, this uh, this summit here? Does it still count as the forest area? Uh, I would say uh, no. Now you're kind of back in the caves. No, no. So, like, are we just are you just asking about like our order? Or, yeah, order. Are you sneaking? Are you just charging on up there? Like, what? What? Are you, how are you going about this? I I well, don't think we're being overly loud. We're yeah, we're, we're being we're cautious, trying, but I don't think we're sneaking. Like, I'm we're not trying very... to be delicate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you you all uh walk up to yeah. the summit, and as you uh get to the top, you see a lot. <laughs> Essentially, um, you have entered this. You, you, you've reached the top, and you can see this tree in all its glory. And this tree is massive. It is just so, so big. Um, and uh, it, you're, you're basically kind of in what appears to sort of be like a clearing. Because all around, you know, uh, at, on the other parts of the cavern, there were trees and fungal and whatnot. But this, this is not as densely populated. Um, hmm. And does it open up to the sky or is it all underground? No, it's still all, you're still very much underground. This okay. is the sunless citadel. Um, the sunless citadel. The sunless citadel. Uh, and se but several varieties of plants are sort of growing around the perimeter of this clearing, uh, including uh, some just like kind of gnarled looking saplings. Um, and you kind of see this, you look at this tree and it does not look like a, a healthy looking tree. It looks very like gnarled and blackened and twisted and its limbs sort of reach upward like a skeletal hand clawing its way out of the earth. Um, and before it uh, stand uh, two humanoid uh, figures. One is a like heavily armored young human male with like a shield and a sword. Uh, mm -hmm. And the other is a blonde uh, uh, female, uh, and she is uh, she's got like a robe and uh, and a staff. Um, and they're kind of like right in front of the tree, and uh, you can Neo Neoma especially because uh, you rolled that nat twenty, you can see that their eyes are and their skin just sort of are like very like their eyes are like pitch black, and their skin sort of almost looks like the texture of the bark uh, of the tree. 
and right Hold beside the tree the one with the ship one with the queen <laughs> and right sort of beside the tree and there's this sort of cauldron and table stands a black robed man with a long beard and like crazed fraying hair and he turns and looks at you and goes well about time you got here and with that we're gonna call episode four of moonlighters <laughs> to a close Bella. Bum, dun, dun. Bum, bum. Gosh darn it. We have to fight our <laughs> friends. I don't want to fight our friends. Hell yeah, let's we kill save the show. them. Eh, we can <laughs> save them, maybe. Mm. Who's to say? We'll find out. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning on in to the Moonlighters uh, tonight. We will. Ooh, there's a lot of things coming up. I just want to double yeah. check, make sure everything's okay. Yeah. So the next session would be on the 8th, which I don't believe there's anything going wrong. But I know uh, the week after that uh, is Magic Fest. Is Magic Vegas. Fest in Vegas and stuff. So we'll have to see. Although. Uh, I get the very, I, I will, you know what, I can, I can definitely say that uh, next session is going to be the finale, likely, of this, uh, of this campaign. So uh, it is definitely not going to be one that you, you want to miss. Um, so uh, before we, we say, our, we, before we uh, uh, leave and whatnot, I would like to thank so much my, my amazing players and go around and allow them to 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 say hello to you all and and plug their stuff and all that jazz because they are all very 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 amazing uh content creators and stuff so tq you're laughing uh <laughs> can you can you do your thing and uh and tell them tell them tell folks where they can find you yeah uh i'm tq uh also known as sly tq and you can find me on twitch under that name I am a variety streamer and I am exhausted from a lot of streaming, but I'll be back tomorrow uh, around 3 p.m. Pacific for some some chill zones and some simulation games. Awesome. Uh, Adam. Hey, hi. Hello. My name is Adam. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Cbats, S-C-A-B-A-T-S. Uh, tomorrow is multi-pals. pals 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 so, I don't know what we're playing. Borderlands. Oh, we're playing Borderlands? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're gonna have to figure out a time to get you all leveled up there, bud. Or we'll, I yeah. actually like the idea of us being like, I think we're what, like level twelve or something like that, and you could just catch up and like power level or Is something. Power level you? We'll see. Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Surge. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Surge. Uh, you can find me over twitchtv Jaeger playing Minecraft and resourcey like city builders and all that kind of fun stuff. So if you like lots of numbers, yeah, what's up? There you go. And last but not least, Funko. Hey, uh, my name's Funko. You can find me at twitch.tv slash el underscore Funko. Uh, later today, I'm going to take a quick break and then do a stream, probably some PUBG, which I do a lot. Um, but then other stuff too, like Arena and Sea of Thieves, probably in the near future. So come on by. I'd love to have you. Awesome. Uh, and uh, hi. Hello. This is my channel. I'm, I'm, I'm Ben, uh, in case maybe you came over from one of these lovely folks's uh, uh, channels. Uh, I am, I think I'm, I'm the same as these friends. I'm a variety streamer. I do all kinds of wild things. Uh, currently, uh, on, uh, on Sundays, I'm doing a Pokemon uh, Nuzlocke challenge run. It is the hardest challenge I've ever had to do because with a fan game that has interesting uh, uh it has an interesting grasp on the term balance uh and uh it's it's been good so far and i also just started playing through uh vampire the masquerade bloodlines and it is super cool uh i i i got told i i did the quiz i did the sorting hat quiz turns out i'm a gangrel and that's like the the feraly vampires who are not totally not werewolves which you know seems pretty apt for me uh, but, uh, but yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, this is where I say goodbye, uh, and I will be right back to, to read all the, the subs and all that kind of jazz. But for you, if you're watching on the YouTube VOD, this is where we're saying goodbye. So, uh, until next time, friends, take care of yourself and we'll see you later see you again. Bye friends. Bye. Bye. Bye.